Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. Today, we're going to be doing my 2021 LEC tier list. This is obviously we don't have all the rosters completely confirmed yet in the LEC. We don't have all the roster swaps and everything down 100%, but we have a pretty good idea for most of these teams somewhat most of the most of the way what their rosters are going to look like. So I think we can begin to st kind of start ranking these teams, start making tier lists and stuff like that. Obviously, I posted my LCS one yesterday that did pretty well. So obviously, the next thing that makes sense is to go with the LEC tier list. Also, once the ro rosters all get a little bit more finalized, I want to run through every single position in both the LCS and LEC and make individual tier lists for those as well, just to kind of get my thoughts and opinions out there before the season. And then as the season goes on, we can kind of see what I was right about, what I was wrong about, and what all you guys were right and wrong about as well. Because I definitely want you uh, to leave a comment down below, letting me know what you think I got right, what you think I got wrong, what your tier list would look like as well. Um, so again, these rosters are not 100%. These moves are not all 100%, but these are kind of our best guesses. And some of these rosters are um, pretty much squared up. Um, so first up, we're going to start out with Excel. Um, I don't think Leaguepedia has their roster out, so I threw it up on a little notepad uh that's the production value you get for excel we have cries dan jekyllad patrick and tor um now for this team obviously i've been getting a ton of comments people are super hyped up about patrick people really really love patrick they think he's one of the best 80 carries in all of lec they think that fanatic should have been going harder for patrick trying to get him um, he's going to be a very, very big carry for this team. He's going to be a nice piece and obviously paired up with Tor in the bot lane. I'm not a huge fan of Tor, but he's experienced. He's won in the LEC. He has, um, you know, he's been around. He is a veteran. He has won big games. He's played on good teams. He, he has solid experience and he should be a solid um, bot lane partner for, for Patrick and that, that should allow him to be pretty good. Um, also, I know that Jekyll Lad, obviously he's coming in. He's new to the LEC, but people are really, really excited about him as well. I think he is going to hopefully be one of these EU mid laners that steps up and starts, you know, popping off right away. It seems like every single year the LEC finds a way to come up with some mid laner um, that people, you know, like the casual fans haven't really heard of and then they just become a beast out of nowhere. Um, we've had a couple instances of that. It seems like the last few years in the LEC. Um, I'm not super excited about Cry's Dan being your uh, top half of the jungle um, but I think they should hopefully be serviceable enough I mean this team's not going to do a ton of damage in the LEC uh, but they have some things to be excited about Patrick is a somebody that gets people really really excited and if Jekyll Lad can be um, you know a, a mid to top tier mid laner in the LEC then Excel can can be kind of scary they can do some damage um, for that reason um, I'm not super high up on Excel um, but I'm not you know too terrible about them i have them maybe low b tier maybe high c tier somewhere in here i think they could make the playoffs i think they could be a scary team um but i don't have them in like the top four or five or anything um so i need to decide exactly what i want to do with them but uh, i guess i would start out with them in like the highest c tier team um next up we have shalka um, obviously they have broken blade coming in over from TSM replacing Odawamne, and then they have limit replacing dreams as well. It seems like they're going to be running it back with Gilius, Abadage and neon. This is obviously the team Shalka, the dream run. Uh, they had the improbable with a terrible start to the season, then the improbable run to make the playoffs, to get in the playoffs. Uh, and then they had their run. They just barely missed out on worlds. Um, but in the back half of the split, they obviously look like one of the better teams in the LEC and people are really hyped up about them coming into 2021. Um, I don't know if Broken Blade is an upgrade over Oduwamne. It's going to be pretty close. I see them as similar. I think if Oduwamne was going to leave, I think Broken Blade is a really, really solid replacement that people should be excited about. I, I am a fan of Broken Blade, but he has his huge strengths. He has pop-off games, but he has his weaknesses as well. Um, I don't know if he's going to you know, necessarily come in and make Shalka better. Um, and then obviously Limit coming in for Dreams. A lot of people are hyped up about Limit right now. I think he will be an exciting really really solid support in the lec um and then obviously the veterans and gilius abadage we know we're getting with faker dage and all that stuff uh it's gonna be pretty funny um but it's hard for me to tell is shalka the beginning half of the season team obviously i don't think they're that terrible where you know they were like winless for super super long but i also don't think they're as good as that miracle run i think um which is with any team i don't think you're ever as good as your highs or your lows um and if shulka was really really that legit you know they would have been able to qualify for worlds especially at a time um where some of those teams first of all the lec had four slots and the, the lec wasn't even necessary or some of those teams weren't even necessarily looking that good um towards the end of the season with like mad lions kind of falling apart how they did rogue not even looking that great by the end of things um and we got to remember you know shalka still did not qualify for world so there it's not like they're this while they are very memeable and fans got really excited and it was this awesome story they're still not you know too too insane we do have to tamp temper our expectations a little bit um i am a huge fan of broken blade i think that's an exciting pickup um i have this team solidly in b tier um next up we got fanatic obviously big stuff going on with fanatic 
Um, where are you at, Fnatic? Uh, we have we assume Whippo is coming back, Selfmade's coming back. We have Hill saying we got it. He got his one-year deal. But the two big changes are obviously Nemesis and Reckless being gone, and Niski and Upset coming in. Now I've made it very clear I'm not a huge fan of Niski, uh, but I think he could fit really, really well into this Fnatic playstyle. Um, I think he's going to do amazing with them. Uh, hopefully, uh, obviously pairing up with Selfmade, he is a guy who uh, Niski is a guy who's going to facilitate. He's going to sacrifice his lane, his leads, his CS and stuff to get his team ahead. I think that's going to be really, really nice when you have a carry oriented style jungler and Selfmade. Obviously, um, obviously they have more big carries. Upset Whippo, huge, pl huge playmaker in Hillisang. Uh, this is a team that was one game away from beating top last year. They almost made it to the World Semifinals. And while yes, they did have a downgrade in the 80 carry position, some people are arguably saying they had an upgrade in the mid lane position. I think Fnatic will be a similar level to what they were last year. Um, I don't think Fnatic fans should be too upset, even though they lost Reckless, even though that sucks. Fnatic's still going to be in a good spot. Again, I have them in A tier. I really, they're my choice for second place in the LEC. Um, so maybe they should even be S tier. But when you have G2 Esports here, uh, it's hard to put any other team in the LEC in the same level as them. Uh, you know, maybe Fnatic's S tier and G2's S++ tier. Uh, I don't know. But I'm just going to put Fnatic at the top of A tier and say that they're my number two choice in the LEC right now. Obviously, then we have G2. What they did this offseason was crazy. You know, they lost perks. They lost the face of their franchise. Um, and they just replaced him with the face of somebody else's franchise. Perks is gone. Reckless is in. This is a team that made it to the world final two years ago. Made it to the world semifinal last year. Uh, lost to the eventual winner. So maybe you can still say they're maybe the second or third best team in the world. Uh, and they, at least in my opinion, got better. I do think Reckless is a better AD carry than Perks. I think he will be an improvement to this team. Um, and again, this is another situation where, yes, G2 should be upset that they lost face their franchise. Uh, a huge personality a, a player that they've you know loved for a long time but they're gonna be okay they did get a very very solid replacement in reckless obviously and i think this makes them uh one of the better teams in the world and clearly the best team in the lec to me i have them uh solely in the s tier for lec teams Next up, we have Mad Lions. This is a team that a lot of people are, have been hyped up and excited about for a while. That young team that's just coming into the LEC hot, you know, taking it by storm. They beat G2 uh, in the spring playoffs. They took a lot of, they took games off a lot of great teams. They are a very, very young, exciting team. Humanoid, Karzi, and Kaiser at different points in time looked like perhaps even the best player in the the entire LEC at their position. Uh, I mean, there were some times, especially when G2 was slumping for a little bit, where Humanoid looked like he was for sure the best mid laner. Kaiser looked like he was an MVP candidate support. Karzy looked like one of the best AD carries. This team has so much young talent, um, but they're just a little bit inconsistent. They have super high highs. They have super low lows. Obviously, it sucked for them that they kind of hit their lows around the playoffs, summer playoffs last year, around Worlds. So they didn't get to look that great at Worlds, didn't get to look that great. Uh, I mean, they didn't even make it out of uh, the play-ins at Worlds. So that's a little bit disappointing for an LEC team. Um, they have a Rome gone. They have Shadow gone. They're bringing in Arma. They're bringing in Aloya. But, uh, you know, this team, they're still inconsistent. They still have some question marks. Hopefully these two guys can come in and be uh you know improvements over romaine shadow but shadow is a guy who he looked like one of the better junglers in the lec when he was on as well obviously again he's a guy who had a big fall off he was a big part of their inconsistency issues but when you have the core of humanoid cards and kaiser your team's always going to be really really solid um but you know i'm not going to say that i'm completely sold on arma and aloya being the answer for these two teams i think it, i think they could easily be worse than last year um and maybe you know maybe not even make it back to worlds um but this team does still have a ton of stuff to be excited about. If Humanoid, Karzy, and Kaiser can kind of find their form again, this team will be very, very solid. They'll be in very good shape. Um, I have them, again, solidly in B tier um, with Schalke. Next up, we have Misfits Gaming. I believe their roster, yes, is on my notepad. Um, we still have a lot of questions about this roster. We don't know it for sure. It looks like Hyrit is going to be starting in the top lane um, with Razork, and then we have uh, Vethio in the mid lane. I can't remember if Certus or Vethio is going to be starting. I know they're kind of going back and forth. They have both of these players on their roster. Um, and then the bot lane, obviously with Kabe and Vander. Now just having Kabe and Vander alone, that is a very exciting bot lane. That's, you know, a very, very solid experience 80 carry. And then Vander looked like one of the best supports in the entire LEC last year, obviously, um, coming over from rogue. Th this team has some pieces to be excited about. Obviously they have huge question marks in the top lane and mid lane, which is scary. You don't want to have question marks in your solo lanes so i don't think this team we can rate too high or anything uh, but kabe and vander are going to win some games just in and of themselves they're going to be a very very formidable bot lane Razark, he's going to be solid he's not going to be a top half of the league jungler or anything um, but obviously they're trying to build towards the future a little bit they're trying to get young in their solo lanes see if they can get something going uh, but 
you know, they have some hope and faith in this team. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't have been bringing in players like Vander um, trying to, you know, get better right now um, if they didn't, you know, think there was something to do with this roster. Again, I don't think they're going to be a playoff team by any means, but I have them in the C tier. I think they're above uh, like the F tier. Um, but yeah, they're decent. Kabe and Vander, something to get excited about. That's always awesome if, if your fans, your team have at least some players to build around for the future to get hyped and excited about. And then if some of their younger players or, you know, more risky players work out with like High Right, um, who's been very solid. He's played on Federbachi before. He's played on LDLC before. Um, he could be decent. They have some, you know, maybe some young talent developing in the mid lane. Uh, could be a good team, but I don't think they're going to do that much damage in 2021. Um, next up, we have Origin. Pretend this is Astralis. Um, we have one of the more interesting lineups in the LEC. First of all, we got White Knight replacing Alfari in the top lane. I love this guy just because his name, I love the name White Knight. That's hilarious. It's always going to make me laugh. Uh, Zanzara in the jungle, Nuke Duck, and then Jeskla and Promise Q. I think this is easily the worst roster in the LEC. Um, I think White Knight is actually an interesting talent and I hope he works out because again, I am a big fan of him. Um, but then Jeskla and Promise Q, it's going to be one of the weaker bot lanes in the entire LEC. I know people, uh, still think Nuke Duck probably shouldn't be in the LEC anymore, especially when there's guys like Nemesis, uh, without a spot. Um, and then we got Zenzara, uh, in the jungle, which is obviously going to be a big question mark as well. Uh, again, I have Astralis very solidly in the F tier, and that is one of the picks that I'm more confident about. Uh, next up, we got Rogue. This is a very, very interesting, very exciting team um, coming into this season. Obviously, they were a very, very good team last year. Inspired Larson Hansama, very, very solid core. Hansama, huge fan of him. Think he's an amazing AD carry, such a nasty carry. Larson, great mid laner. Um, obviously, one of the big question marks was Finn in the top lane. He didn't look that great towards the end of the year. He didn't look that great in the summer playoffs, and he didn't look that great at Worlds. But they've got Oduwamne coming in for them. They found, they had a huge question mark on their roster. It was a top lane. They found a very, very solid replacement. I think that's going to be a huge upgrade for Rogue. I think that is a great step in the right direction for their team. And it did suck that they lost Vander though. So even though they're getting a big upgrade in the top lane, they're probably getting a downgrade in the support position. Um, however, they must believe in Trimby. They must be very, very excited about him. Um, again, I have no idea what he's going to be able to do when he comes into LEC. It's going to be a big question mark. Um, but he's going to be thrown right into the flames because Rogue is going to be competing for a world spot. They're going to want to challenge Fnatic for maybe even being the second best team in the LEC. This is going to be a team playing a ton of big games. There's going to be a ton of pressure on Trimby to see what he can do. Um, but the rest of Rogue just looks so solid, so class um, that I have this team solidly in the A tier. Um, probably just a little bit behind Fnatic. Obviously, um, I think Fnatic has a little bit less question marks than Rogue. Um, they don't have somebody coming in like Trimby or something, but um, I think it can be a decent team. Uh, next up, we have SK Gaming. Uh, a lot of new faces coming into this roster. We have Gen X staying in the top lane. Then we have Tynex, Blue, Jezu, and Treat. Now, obviously, uh, Treat was with TSM last year. I'm in NA. I like TSM. I'm a big fan of Treat. I really hope he goes over to SK. I hope he does big things. I hope uh, he does well. I hope he performs well. I'm glad he's finally getting his chance. Um, and then we have a lot of new, uh, younger faces like Blue. How is he going to be able to come in and do in the LEC? This is another guy that some people think he'll be the big breakout LEC mid laner. You know, EU mids man uh, guy to work out here. Uh, we have Tynex coming in and then Jezu as well i think jesu and treats have a chance to be a decent bot lane i think they could be exciting treats again looked very very good at times in na he had a couple weeks where he was starting for tsm where he went like deathless like two weeks in a row or something like that i think he's a very very good shot caller in-game leader um i think he has good uh calls he has a decent sized champion pool obviously he didn't mesh well with double lift so maybe there's some questions about his laning phase and stuff or maybe he was just playing with a washed up ad carry and he's gonna go to uh, to sk and absolutely smurf um because he's looked amazing in academy he's looked great in the lcs when he's gotten chances to play um and uh, yeah, so SK is doing some good stuff, building towards the future. If some of these uh, new faces can work out a little bit, SK could be a solid team. Um, but again, I think there's just a few two question marks to be too high on them right now. I have them in the C tier um, with Excel and Misfits. I think they're solidly better than like Misfits, um, but they can be competing for Excel. I think a lot of these teams are going to be battling for this final playoff spot um, in the LEC. Um, next up, we have Vitality, who we have a ton of question marks about. Uh, I they, Again, we don't really have any of their roster confirmed yet, so I assume they're going to be bringing back most of these players. Uh, we got Cabo Shard, Skeens, uh, Militia, Comp, and Lebrov. Obviously, Militia is a guy who people have been very, very excited about for a long time, getting to see 
um you know can he take that next step and become one of the better mid laners in the lec that'll be exciting to watch cabo shard very very uh experienced veteran uh you kind of know what you're getting with him he's not going to be the best top laner in the lec but he's going to be very solid you know middle middle to upper tier um that is something to be really really excited about compliment brob this is the same vitality team we saw for last year for the most part um again i haven't really heard about any changes or anything they're going to be doing um so they're gonna be a solid team again they're gonna have a chance to compete for a playoff spot but a lot of these teams in the lec made a bunch of moves got better um i have vitality at the bottom of the b tier for me i think they're gonna be close to like excel and sk um they could be a little bit better they could be a little bit worse um but i don't think they're gonna i i think i like these top five teams a little bit better than them but that is pretty much it for this video today guys this is it this is my 2021 lec uh tier list this is what i think is gonna happen in the lec so far again all these rosters aren't confirmed all these moves aren't confirmed if there's any big changes or even some small changes my tier list and rankings and thing could move around but again i'm an lcs guy i'm in north america i don't get to watch every single lec game it doesn't always fit my schedule my time zones or anything so i don't completely know everything about the lec and especially a lot of these younger players coming up from erl i really don't know about you know i've, I've heard people talk about them i've heard the rumors and everything about them um, but until I get to see them play in the LEC and get to actually watch them play games live, which I do plan on watching a lot of LEC this year, and I always do, it's just I haven't seen all the games, um, you know, my opinions and stuff are going to change. Obviously, I think it's really, really hard. No one knows how young players are going to come in and be able to perform. Um, but yeah, this is just what I'm thinking so far. Again, I know I got stuff wrong. I know I got stuff right. Leave a comment down below. Let me know your tier list, what you change, what you think differently, what we agree on, um, and all that good stuff. Again, I'm going to have tier lists coming out for all the different positions in the LEC and LCS as well. Um, so be looking out for those videos. Uh, drop a like if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below. You know, let me know about your stuff. Subscribe to update on the latest content. Check me out over at Twitch, twitch.tv slash I underscore am underscore germ. Hopefully I catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace.